Hi, this is Clement. I'm really excited to be speaking to you about effective user interviews for product managers. And so real quick, again, I'm Clement Cal. I'm currently the co-founder uh, of Product Manager HQ. And based on my previous experiences as a product manager, wanted to talk a little bit more about how to effectively conduct uh, user interviews because user interviews are a really fantastic way for a product manager to know more about how to build an amazing product. And so first, I wanted to give you a quick breakdown of what I'll be talking about today. I wanna to talk first about what is a user interview? I think for a lot of product managers, we don't typically get a lot of training in terms of user research. And so really understanding what a user interview is can really help. From there, I wanna talk a little bit about why user interviews are important, how it will enable you to build a better product, and then dive into the details for how to conduct an effective user interview, where I'll provide you a step-by-step -step breakdown of how to make all of that work. So let's dive in. A user interview is basically a way in which you can gather a lot of information and it's kind of all in the name. You're speaking with someone who is a user, maybe either they're already a user or they'll be a future user of your product and you really wanna dive deep with them. The goal is really to gain qualitative information, right? So the thing is you're unlikely to be able to get any type of statistical significance. This is not uh, metrics oriented data. This is a lot more qualitative where you're trying to understand more about the user's voice, right? Who are they? What are they trying to do? And how might your product be able to help them solve their pains? And the thing is, user interviews can unlock a lot of incredible insight for product managers and for their teams. The thing is, when you're speaking directly with users in a human interaction, you get to learn a lot about, for example, how are people making decisions in terms of selecting your product versus competing products, right? Kind of what are the different ways in which they think about the problem that they're trying to tackle and about how they might decide on selecting a product or even looking for a product, right? you're gonna learn a lot about what they might be hesitant about, anything that they might object towards in terms of, well, I don't wanna use this because of whatever reason, and also really understand what type of value they see in your product and in competing products, right? And so in speaking directly with users, you get a lot richer context of what these people are trying to do with their lives and how your product fits in to solve that pain and unlock value that then you can capture as a product manager. And on top of that, it provides you with really amazing real life stories about who might be a good fit. And so again, while a user interview is not something that is you know, quantitatively uh, statistically significant because you're reaching out to you know, individual human beings, you can still get a really good directional sense of the type of people that might be best suited to use your product. So you'll get a really good understanding, for example, of, the t of demographic information, right? Maybe these are people who are older, or maybe they're younger, maybe they are in larger families, smaller families, et cetera. You'll get all of this really rich information about the types of people that might be best suited. And that's not just you know, demographic data. You might get some sense into psychographics, right? The types of behaviors or attitudes that people have as well as the different personas. And so uh, especially crucial, for example, if you're working in business to business product management, really understanding the different kinds of people who might contribute to the decision-making process for selecting a product is really, really helpful. And so again, one of the really, I'd say underutilized uh, tools within the product management toolkit is the user interview, right? And I think for a lot of product managers, you know, we might say, well, I'm not trained in you know, being a user researcher, not quite sure like how this fits in, but the thing is, I think a lot of the time, product managers get blocked on trying to understand, well, I don't necessarily know how I should build my product because I don't really understand my user that deeply. And one of the ways in which to get really rich background context into how are people thinking, how are they making decisions, and how does your product fit into their lives, doing user interviews can be much more insightful than, let's say, potentially A-B testing, right? The thing is, with A-B testing or doing surveys or doing analytics, Quantitative data tells you a lot about the what, right? It tells you a lot about what the landscape looks like, but it doesn't tell you the why. And you know, user interviews, because they're qualitative, tell you a lot about the why. Why aren't people using their product? How are people deciding on whether to use competing products? Or um, how are people thinking about your product when it comes time to purchase it, right? And so again, user interviews are a really crucial and underutilized part of the product management toolkit, which is why I wanna go ahead and dive into 
how to actually conduct an effective user interview. And so the way that I think about it is that, you know, I break it up into three different phases. There's before the interview, where you're going to make sure that you're all set up and that you're all well-coordinated, well-planned. Then there's during the interview, what are the best practices to make sure that you gather the most amount of insight? And then after the interview, how do you capture all of that insight and make sure that then you can share that out with your teams and actually make that something that's actionable so that you're able to drive a better product by having done these interviews. And so first, in terms of before the interview, um, one of the things that you'll do is you'll first plan out, hey, what does the interview look like? And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and go look for people to interview. Um, then you're going to screen them down so that that way you make sure that you don't have biases. And then after that, you're gonna go ahead and schedule them to be able to go talk with them. And so first things first, in terms of planning the interview, what does that look like? Well, first off, What's really important is actually understanding what your objective as a product manager is in having these user interviews, right? And the thing is, you might have many different reasons for why you want to do a user interview. Maybe you're trying to understand a new problem area or a new industry that you just don't have a lot of exposure to. And that interview might be very different from an interview where you're trying to understand a product decision. For example, what types of flows should we be using? What types of you know, user experiences would, should we be surfacing, right? Maybe you have a particular hypothesis or multiple competing hypotheses that you're trying to prove or disprove, right? And so really taking it up to the top of what is my objective will really help you to understand, hey, how should I lay out my interview? Then based on the objectives that you have, you wanna go ahead and identify the questions that are most critical for you to ask, right? So for example, let's say that I'm trying to understand how are people buying groceries, right? Well, what I'll need to understand is, you know, for example, how, uh, why is it that someone buys groceries, right? How do they make those decisions? What goes into the grocery list? What types of uh, markets might they be looking at, right? How much is their decision-making influenced by discounts? There are all these different questions that could feed into your objective and it's your role as a product manager to figure out how to prioritize those, right? What is the question where if you learn the answer to it, that will really enable your product to shine? Then once you've identified all the questions that you, know, you feel are really crucial to get answered, go ahead and give them some rough time estimates, right? Generally speaking, I found that for any given question, a short answer might be somewhere in the range of three minutes, a long answer might be somewhere in the range of 10 minutes. And so go ahead and you know, list out the amount of time that you think you'll need to be able to get a respondent to give you deep enough insights for you to actually act on it, right? And the reason why I say that you should go ahead and estimate the time required for each question is that at some point, you're gonna find out that you have way too many questions, right? You're gonna find out that you can't actually fit everything into a single one hour session or a single 90 minute session. And so you're going to need to reorganize. Some questions you may have to consolidate, some questions you might have to cut out, and you really need to make sure, again, that you're prioritizing for what is most important to get on that initial interview. And I think the other thing just to keep in mind is, you know, don't expect that as you're planning out the interview, that conversations are going to be uh, straightforward. The thing is, you know, when humans talk to each other, we're all very conversational, um, you know, things can come up kind of serendipitously. And so just remember to leave enough room for an organic conversation to develop and for you to be able to explore side paths. Because sometimes answering a question that wasn't part of your interview script can actually be really valuable for you to understand more about how this person thinks about making decisions and why or why not they're using your product. So just remember to leave enough room in between questions. You know, don't try to stack a bunch of questions where you know, each question will only take two minutes and you're going to get 30 questions answered. That's not going to happen. I've generally found that I can get through about, let's say five to 10 questions, depending on the, the depth um, within a one hour session. And so again, just make sure that you're understanding what are the most crucial questions that you absolutely need to get answered and make sure you leave enough time for that. And you know, cut, 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 make sure that you are focusing your interview on what is really the most important so that you leave enough space for organic insights to show up as you're talking uh, with your interviewee. So great, now you have the interview outline. You generally have a sense of how long you want to spend on each question and kind of what questions you wanna ask in what sequence. Now we have to go find interviewees. And honestly, this is one of the hardest parts of conducting a user interview because, you know, who should I go talk to, right? Like, how can I actually get people to engage with me? 
The way that I found to be the most effective is to actually go ahead and jumpstart your pool of interviewee candidates by reaching out to your own network, right? The thing is, you know, you have family, you have friends, you have colleagues, all these people are more than happy to work with you because, you know, they are personally invested with in, into you, right? And so go ahead and reach out to them first. And, you know, as you work with them, you know, you might find out that as you're doing the interview, well, this might not actually be the target segment that I want to go after. And that's totally okay. Ask them to refer other people to you and, you know, help them help you, right? Like, oh, I'm looking for this type of person to speak to next, right? And so really begin with your own network because it's more likely that you're going to get much richer conversations from them and that they're more likely to say yes. And also that they're going to be able to connect you with other people who are worth talking to. And then the other thing is, you know, at some point, you're going to find that, hey, my network is only so limited and I can't reach out to a particular market segment. And that's okay. When you do need to reach out to people outside of your network, though, keep in mind that you might have to provide monetary incentives. Because the thing is, these people don't really have a relationship with you yet. They're outside of your network. And so you need to make it worth their time to speak with you. Generally speaking, I found that aiming between you know, 1.5 times compensation um, is the most effective. And so let's say that you're speaking with someone who generally makes you know, $30 an hour and you want to talk with them for an hour. Well, if you say, hey, I'll pay you $30 for this interview, it's highly unlikely that they're going to say yes, because it is some amount of time for them to coordinate with you, et cetera. And so I say, as a baseline, you want to aim for 1.5x. So you know, offering $45 if that type of person typically makes $30 uh, per hour. Um, again, kind of if your interview is going to be longer, you need to compensate them more. Um, and again, like that's just a rule of thumb. Uh, you might find as you're iterating through that you might actually need to pay more. I've seen sometimes, you know, compensation might be, you know, two times or three times out of their hourly rate. And so just keep that in mind that when you reach out to your network, it's going to be more expensive, but it's likely going to be less biased because they're not currently in your network. So the thing is, you've sourced all of these people that you can potentially talk to. But one of the challenges is that you don't want to wind up talking to the same kind of person over and over and over again, because that's very likely to bias you, right? You might wind up thinking that, oh, the entire market is made up of this one type of person, when actually there's a very diverse range of people. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a representative sample of the market that you're aiming after, right? And so one of the best ways that I found to make sure that you do have that representative sample is to actually go ahead and create a screener. And a screener is nothing more than just a couple of questions that you ask um, to make sure that you know, before you talk to people, you understand kind of all of the different dimensions that they might be coming from, right? And so you might ask for um, you know, how old are they, or like gender, or um, you know, geography, where they're currently at. You might ask them for you know, current habits and existing usage. And so for example, um, going back to that whole grocery shopping example, maybe I want to ask, hey, how often do you go out to go um, shopping for groceries? And how often are you shopping for groceries online versus in person? And so asking those questions then means that for each potential respondent, you have this nice list. And that way you can start knocking out duplicates, right? You can knock out uh, cases where you might be speaking to the same kind of person more than once. You want to make sure that you have a representative sample that looks more like the market that you want to go after as a product manager. And so, you know, after you figured out, okay, I wanted to go talk to these people, scheduling interviews can honestly be a really big pain, right? And especially, you know, I've done this the wrong way before myself, where kind of I try to coordinate over email and it's just a nightmare. And so one of the things that's very helpful is using calendar services, for example, something like Canonly, uh, to go ahead and show, hey, here are all the spots where I'm currently open, go ahead and select your own time, right? And kind of that is helpful because then kind of you're no longer needing to propose times, then have them counter propose times, and then kind of deal with all this mess of scheduling. Um, Calendly and you know, other calendar services will let you be able to do that. I think the other thing to really keep in mind, and I've been burned this by this before myself, is just make sure that you're leaving enough time in between interviews. Um, you know, I generally like to aim for a 30 minute break to a 45 minute break in between interviews. And the reason for that is because as the interviewer, you're really diving deep, you're pouring in a lot of energy and emotions into connecting with this person that you're speaking to, and you're furiously trying to document everything that they're saying, right? And so it's going to be exhausting. And if you chain a bunch of interviews together, you'll wind up not consolidating that information in your head, you'll be too rushed to move from one interview to the next. And so just make sure that you give yourself enough time. The other rule of thumb that I like to keep 
is you know, try not to have more than three or four interviews per day, because again, that's likely gonna make you burn out and be a lot less engaged and involved with the later folks that you speak with in the day. So great, we've finally gotten through all of the preparation logistics. Again, we now have an interview outline. We know that the people that we're gonna be speaking to, they're all on the calendar, fantastic, right? And now we're gonna actually go walk into the interview to speak with them to understand, well, who are you and how can we help you as a product, right? And so in terms of best practices for the interview, I strongly recommend that when you first begin, you go ahead and provide some context to your interviewee, right? And so, you know, give them some background about why you're even chatting today. Hey, I'm currently a product manager. You know, I'm looking to be able to do X, Y, Z. I'd love to learn about whatever, whatever. I'm reaching out to people like you in these instances to better understand how you might X, right? And again, tie that back to your overarching objective, be transparent with them, let them know how they can best help you, right? Again, kind of their bought in to speaking with you. So go ahead and give them the context of what you want to use the time for. I found that by providing more context to interviewees, it helps them better understand what kinds of responses they should be giving you, right? Because the thing is, sometimes when you ask a very open-ended question, uh, they might wind up rambling. And if they don't really understand, well, oh, this is the type of information that this person is trying to get, they might ramble and not really focus on the types of insights that you need. And here, kind of given that time is so precious and so limited, after all, you've only got the time that you've scheduled together, um, you really wanna make sure that you're helping them help you as much as you can. So provide that upfront context to them kind of before you jump into the interview, right? Go ahead and establish that rapport, make sure that you know, the two of you are gelling well together, you know, that you are both engaged and ready to talk. And then you know, work through your questionnaire, right? And the thing is, what you wanna do is, again, kind of you have your interview guide, sometimes you might find that you need to adjust things on the fly and that's totally okay. Just make sure that you are answering the questions that you need to get answered because again, you only have so much time to speak with this person and while sometimes some interviewees are more than happy to schedule additional sessions with you, you can't rely on that, right? And so you just need to make sure that you are going through uh, your questionnaire and that you are trying to maintain kind of those time boundaries that you gave yourself. Again, be flexible, but dive into it. You know, really understand how is the interviewee actually thinking about making decisions, right? Again, you are really trying to best represent this human being within your team when you're trying to build out a product, right? That's the entire point of a user interview is to really understand how are they thinking about different challenges, right? And so for example, let's say that I want to surface up a mock design, right? Well, when I present them with a mock design, what I don't want to do is I don't want them to just say, oh yeah, this looks good, right? Or, oh, I'll just click here. Like you wanna actually ask them to talk out loud, to share their live thought processes with you of, oh, hey, I currently see that I'm on this homepage and I'm not really sure where to click next. Oh, I see, here's a call to action. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. I'm not sure what it's gonna do, but I think maybe it'll open up a modal. So you wanna get make sure that they're voicing as much of their thoughts to you as possible, because if they're not voicing it, there's no way for you to capture all of that really rich context of the kinds of barriers that a user might have in adopting your product. Because again, having that uh, voice kind of a voice over and share how they're thinking about your product is incredibly important. And many times you won't be able to get that insight quantitatively through A-B testing. You're really only gonna be able to get that when you're speaking with a human being live. And so again, kind of you've gone through the interview, right? You kind of, you've went through your interview guide, showed them the mocks that you wanted to show them or discuss kind of the high level questions that you wanted to answer. You've wrapped up, right? You've both had a really great time talking together. What's next? Well, first off, you know, take the time to step away from the interview that you just had and just reflect on how can I do a better interview? I think one of the things that will happen is, and this is from personal experience, for every new time that I'm kicking off some series of interviews, um, I've noticed that my first one or two sessions aren't my best sessions because we'll learn together that, hey, some questions are just not that valuable and other questions start to come up that are way more valuable, right? And you wanna be flexible. You wanna be able to pivot towards the questions that are going to yield you the most value, right? So do a quick retrospective, spend like five minutes reflecting on the interview of, hey, what are the questions that I thought were really effective? Where were the places where the user kind of got lost and maybe I accidentally misguided them? What are the different tweaks that I need to make to the questionnaire, et cetera, so that your future interviews are gonna be a lot more effective. Then 
Um, you'll want to go ahead and make sure that you document your notes and put them somewhere. Um, ideally, you want to get that done within the same day that you do the interview. And that's why I say you don't want to do more than three to four interviews per day, because you do need to go ahead and pull together all of those insights. You don't want to lose them, right? The thing is, if you don't actually put it somewhere and the interview session is not recorded, um, it can be really hard for you to remember kind of all of the deep nuances that you and your user discussed, right? And I think kind of just pausing on that point in terms of recording an interview, of course, one of the best practices is just make sure that if you do wind up recording it, um, that you ask for the user's permission to record um, so that they're aware and to ask for their permission before you begin the recording, right? So just make sure that you know, you're maintaining their privacy and kind of respecting their rights. Um, and just make sure again, kind of you know how your notes are gonna be structured, where to put them so that you can finally share it out with stakeholders. You wanna be able to share out how is the user thinking with your engineers, with your designers, with your QAs, with your executive team. You really wanna make sure that people are understanding what customer you're serving, right? The thing is you went through all of this effort in terms of planning out interviews, in terms of scheduling them, talking with people, documenting it. You really wanna make sure that everyone is benefiting from your expertise. And so by sharing this out with stakeholders, you're really getting the most bang for your buck in terms of all of this rich insight that you've gotten. And again, that will then enable you to bring your product to the next level because now the voice of the user is fully embedded into your team. Kind of you no longer need to um, you know, worry about, am I correctly representing the user? If you've got all of this rich insight from conducting these user interviews. And so just to summarize again, in terms of user interviews, they're really valuable in that they can surface you insights that you might not typically get in terms of quantitative data analytics. You're gonna learn a lot about the why. Who are the users who really care about my product? What competitors am I up against? How are they making the decisions of when to use me versus when to use someone else, right? And you wanna think through the user interview in three stages. Before, where you're doing all of the planning and the logistics. During, where you wanna make sure that you're super focused with them and leave enough time to kind of organically evolve conversations and afterwards to make sure that you're documenting and doing retrospectives to grow, right? And so again, kind of your core goal is really to be able to represent internally within your head how this person is thinking and then be able to share that out with as many folks that you work with as possible so that all of you are building for the user together, right? And so again, by doing the homework of planning out the interview, you'll be able to get the really rich learnings that you need to evolve your product. By making sure that you are you know, giving yourself enough time to talk through certain questions that you care about during the interview, you'll find new nuances. You'll find new hypotheses that you didn't necessarily consider upfront. And when you reflect and you document your findings, you'll ensure that you're gonna ask better interview questions moving forward and that you'll be able to best represent the user within your product and to really solve their pain. And again, for products, when we solve our users' pain, we create value for them. And only when we create value for them can we then capture that value for our businesses. And so that's why user interviews are so important. It's so important for us to understand the pain that we're trying to solve so that we can go ahead and capture that value. So thanks so much for listening to this presentation. Um, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to share resources. Uh, I'm also the co-founder of Product Manager HQ. Um, so if you're ever curious about user interviews or anything else about product management, go ahead and take a look there first. We have more than uh, hundreds of articles in terms of discussing product management. So hopefully that'll help you in your journey as a product manager. And if you're looking for new roles, regardless of whether you're a product manager or anyone else, um, my current company, Blend, is hiring. Um, so feel free to reach out. Thanks so much.